Gentleman from California, Mr. Rohrbacher, for his question. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let me just note uh, before I ask any questions that I, uh, I have in my career been very supportive of trying to develop certain technologies that I consider to be more efficient at providing the energy needs uh, for the people of the world, whether it's uh, uh, nuclear energy, which we're talking about now, and by the way, I would hope, Mr. Chairman, that we don't focus on, on the development of nuclear energy that is uh, uh, least likely to be developed. We can actually do fission reactors now that are very efficient and, and, and come to play in this uh, issue as compared to fusion, which it seems always to be 20 years away 30. And, and 30 years away and always will be. Uh, we, can, we can produce uh, safe nuclear uh, reactors right now if we'd focus on fission and quit wasting <laughs> our money on, on fusion. But that's just where I, a disagreement. Thank you. Um, but also, you know, I believe in solar and wind and all the rest of these as long as they pencil out. Uh, and what we need is a new battery technology, which I understand is on the way when those things will actually become profitable and people will naturally go in that direction. Because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't the amount of carbon that, that is put in the air reflect the fact that we are not efficiently producing energy? Isn't that, uh, isn't that what we're talking about here? I believe so. But when you come down to this debate over adaptation versus mitigation, there's an insistence on what you're talking about when, when people talk about mitigation, that we control human behavior rather than having people naturally evolve uh, in response to that need. And uh, so I'm a little bit disturbed by number one, that we, uh, that just over and over again I hear, don't ever talk about whether or not mankind is, is the main cause of of the temperature changing and the climate changing. That's a little disturbing to hear constantly beaten into our heads in a science committee meeting when, when basically we should all be open to, to points of different points of view. Because the uh, answer that we've been given in terms of mitigation versus adaptation is that we need controls over people's lives and let make their decisions for them rather than adapt economically and elsewise. Um, let me ask you whether or not any of you on the panel would agree that solutions, uh, uh, I've read a number of, of studies that have indicated there's certain solutions that are being advocated. One study was is that we should be eliminating pets, dogs. Dogs should be eliminated and that's, that's part of their solution that we're going to do that. Uh, there was a, a one that talked about ending frequent flyer miles and others, of course, who uh, talk about how we need to a major increase in parking fees and gas taxes. Now, do any of you on that panel agree that that, that approach, no more dogs, you can't have a dog as your pet, we're going to outlaw those things, and no more frequent flyer miles, by the way, Ordinary people benefit from frequent flyer miles. And dogs. And, and dogs. Now you have to see them on the airplanes, actually. And uh, versus uh, in major increases in parking fees. Do any of you support that type of human control in order to come to grips with what you're telling us is absolutely undebatable, the man caused uh, global warming? Do any of you agree with any one of those solutions? Go ahead. No, okay. um, I will. Right. I will. Uh, I, I will say that, um, and I, as I uh, indicated in my written testimony, I think that modest tax regulatory pricing policies can help modestly move us at a cost-effective way towards lower carbon technologies. But the underlying sort of fundamental fact that will determine how far we get will be the availability of low cost. Uh, low carbon technologies, and that's going to retire a lot of continuing innovation. And like as I say, the amount of carbon going into the air reflects that that technology is not as efficient as other means. Now, those of us who don't believe that we should be 
expanding the control of government over our lives and that people should actually have more, more decisions rather than less, uh, that that is, uh, uh, that's the area of contention that I see here. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for this hearing. Uh, thank you, Mr.